Here's question two. It says, when the following reaction is balanced, what are the coefficients? List the coefficients in the same order as the substances are listed. So in these types of problems, you're going to be given a sentence, so to speak, of some reaction. And you have to know how to translate that chemical reaction into a balanced equation. And there's actually a bit of thinking here involved. So here's how I tend to teach people how to do these. First of all, you want to find all the main words and recognize that this is going to involve naming and balancing. And that's really important that you understand the naming system. So here we have an ionic compound, manganese 4 oxide, and it reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce manganese 2 chloride, chlorine gas, which is a diatomic element. You do need to know your seven diatomics as well as water. So there's a lot going on. This has five species, so to speak. And here's how you start writing it off. First, we have manganese for oxide. Manganese, and this is going to be sketch notes over here. So manganese four, that means that it's a manganese ion with a four plus charge, so an oxidation state of four. It's a metal. It's a cation, so it's always going to have a positive charge when it participates in ionic bonding typically. So that's going to be Mn4+. Oxide is O, so it's an oxygen ion. Oxide is in the family that tends to have a 2 minus charge. You do need to also recognize that looking at the periodic table, you need to be able to look at it and recognize that oxide and sulfide are going to be 2 minus charges. So those are going to be like old background basics. But once you know these charges and you write them out, then you can do the crossover method and you'll come into your first little issue, which is Mn little 2 O little 4. So if you learn the crossover method as commonly taught, you'll see that these two subscripts, 2 and 4, are not totally reduced. Think of it as a fraction. 2 and 4 can be reduced to 1 over 2. So that's one way you can fix this and just make it um, Mn O2 and squish them together. You could also do this. Without doing the crossover trick, you can kind of just look at it and think logically, like how many oxide ions do I need to balance out a single manganese ion? Well, oxygen, the oxide ion is minus two, the manganese four ion is four plus, so you need two of these, and that makes sense. All that to say that the first thing is an ionic compound with the chemical formula of MnO2. We can put a, back, a black bar because Actually, I'll make it orange because we know we're going to have to balance this. And then it says reacts with, so that's going to be a plus sign. Hydrochloric acid, definitely know how to name your acids, but this is a really simple one. Hydrochloric is just HCl. Then it says to produce. Sometimes you'll see to produce, to form, to yield. That's your sign to put down a reaction arrow. We have another ionic compound, manganese 2 chloride. In this case, manganese has a different oxidation state. It has a different charge. Uh, in this case, manganese 4 was reduced because it went from a 4 plus to a 2 plus. So over here, we have that as Mn with a 2 plus charge. That's what this means in Roman numerals. And we have the chloride ion, which you should be able to know, looking at the periodic table, the entire halogen family. So that's fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they're going to be the minus ones. So the oxygen family is the minus twos. The, the halogen family is the minus ones. So you definitely need to be able to look at chloride or fluoride or whatever and assume that immediately it's minus one. And we do the same logic here. We need two chloride ions to balance out the one manganese two ion. All of this is important because if you don't even get the chemical formulas correct, then balancing is not going to work either. So here we have manganese 2 chloride. We also have as a product chlorine gas. It tells you it's a diatomic, which I think is actually kind of nice because you certainly should know the seven diatomic elements. And then it says and water, which is just H. I'll put a, I guess I'll put a blank here. H2O. So that's how you get you get to this stage and then you're kind of good because from here it's really just counting. 
Here's a little bit of logic to look for as well. If you have a question like this, once you get the skeleton equation, which gives you this, uh, once you have the skeleton equation and you're ready to balance, just think logically a little about, for example, a few different um, elements in it. There is only one manganese on the left currently, and there's only one manganese on the right. Manganese is going to be stuck to those two. So whatever coefficient is going to be here has got to be equal to this one. The first and the third coefficients have to be the same because manganese has got to be balanced with manganese. And that same logic can be applied a little bit differently to the oxygen, which appears in these two places. There are two oxygens on the left and one oxygen on the right. So whatever coefficients you get from balancing, you're going to need twice as many oxygens in this position than this position in order for it to be balanced. So just thinking about the first thing I just said. The first and third coefficients have got to be equal because that would keep manganese equal. And if you look at it, the first and third are equal here and here and here and here. So you can immediately strike out the second one. So it's not that one because the first and third coefficients are not the same. That same logic about the oxygens can be used here as well. Matter of fact, if you use this logic for all of the for all of the things, you will get you can get the right answer without having to truly truly balance it. But you can also balance it if you want. So we know that whatever the fifth coefficient is has got to be double the first coefficient. So looking at the first and fifth, that's a one and a three. That ratio is not right. Keeping on with this one, that's a one and a two, two and a four, two and a three. Well, that makes it this one's also not logical. So now you're down to two options. And you can look at hydrogen as a clue. One hydrogen on the left, two hydrogens on the right. Whatever your balancing is, your coefficients are going to have to be double. The second coefficient has got to be double the fifth coefficient. So let's take a look at that. Second and fifth coefficient. The fifth coefficient has got to be double. So in this case, four is, or the uh, second coefficient got to be double. So in this case, 4 is double 2. And that makes sense because if you were to put a 4 here and a 2 here, you get 4 hydrogens on the left and 4 hydrogens on the right. So that's how you know that this is your correct answer. And just verify that everything makes sense. And um, it should. Because remember, if you put a 4 here, you also have 4 chlorines on the left. And then putting the other coefficients in, you'll have four claims on the right. I always say to people, balancing is one of those things where sometimes trial and error is just how you do it. That's why you bring a pencil or just be free. Feel free to cross things out. If you can count, you can balance. There are some other situations with balancing um, that I can show people that are a little bit more systematic, but it really is kind of trial and error and just being able to count.